First Timothy chapter 1, if you have that, okay, beginning verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought you to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest church some that they teach no other doctrine. Sabi natin, no other doctrine. Now, the word doctrine simply means teaching. Okay, no other teaching. No other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith. So do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience of faith and faith. From which some have swerved, have turned aside unto vain juggling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good. Sabi natin, the law is good. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully or if a man use it properly. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for mothers of fathers and mothers of mothers, for manslayers, for warmongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be, be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God. Say that with me, glorious gospel of the blessed God. Okay, Paul, in this uh, instruction that given to Timothy, he was telling Timothy, don't teach other doctrine but the glorious gospel of the blessed God. Na do ang kamagtuturo ng anumang katuruan maliban doon sa glorious gospel, mabuting balita ng ating Panginoon. Okay? Now, here Paul was writing to Timothy. Timothy was considered by Paul as son in the faith. Now, uh, uh, of course, as a pastor, Timothy was now pastor in this church in Ephesus, and as a pastor, Timothy was was called and anointed by God. It was God, it was the Lord Jesus Christ who called and who anointed Timothy in that ministry group as a pastor. But as, uh, you know, as a pastor in the local church in Ephesus, it was the Apostle Paul who sent, it was the Apostle Paul who appointed, so to speak, Timothy to be the pastor of the church in Ephesus. And he had some instruction to give to Timothy. Sa kandila nang po that that this was his dilemma. This was this was you know this was the problem. Kote ng kote na nangyayari po doon sa mga churches even at that time. Maging sa mga churches po na si Pablo po nagpasimula, siya po nagtanim, siya po nagpasimula. Na kapag siya po umalis, ito po ay sinasamantala po ng ilang mga tao. Okay, ang tinutukoy po natin, yung po mga tao po na bagamat sila po ay naborn again, bagamat sila po ay, ay naging believers of our Lord Jesus Christ, but these people were formerly Jews. Hindi po nila maiwanan yung po ilang mga bagay-bagay sa batas ni Moses. They would still require people, you know, the believers, particularly the Gentile believers, you know, to go back to the law, particularly circumcision. You know, and, and, and these people, they assume that they, they were the teachers of the law. But Paul said, these people are trying to be teachers of the law, and yet they don't understand the law. Now, now go with me to, to verse, uh, <clears throat> where is that? Verse 7, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say, nor whereof they affirm. So ito po yung mga tao po na pilit na pumapasok po sa mga churches na kung saan ibabalik po nila yung mga New Testament believers, pilit po nilang ibinabalik doon po sa batas ni Moses, sa Old Covenant Law of Moses. And they were deciding to be teachers of the law, but the problem is they don't understand what they are saying, nor whereof they affirm. Verse 8, but we know. Sabi natin, but we know. Okay, Paul said, but we know. Meaning, Timothy, you and I, we know. But we know that the law is good. Sabi natin, the law is good. Now, ito po ang pagkaroon bintang po sa atin, tayo pong nasa Gospel of Grace. Ang bintang po sa atin, 
Tayo daw po ay anti-law. Okay, tayo po ay, daw po ay antinomian. We are now against law. No, we are not against law. In fact, Paul, the apostle of grace, tells us that the law is good. Amen? The law is good if it is used properly. So Paul said, knowing this, uh, uh, if a man use it lawfully or if a man use it properly, verse 8. Now verse 9, knowing this. So we have to know this. As far as the law is concerned, we have to know this. Knowing this is very important. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners and for unholy and profane, for mothers of fathers and mothers of mothers, for manslayers, for warmongers, etc., etc. Okay? Ito bang mga salitang ito? Ito ba yung nagdi-describe sa'yo? Bilang mananampalataya? Okay? Of course not. Are you disobedient? Are you unholy? Are you a mother or a father? A mother of mother? Are you a manslayer? Are you a warmonger? Okay? Are you a sinner? Of course not. If you are a believer, you know that God made you righteous. You are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, if you are a believer and you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, the law is no longer for you. The law was made for the unrighteous. The law was made for the sinners. The law was made for the unholy. Are you still here with me? Okay. So we need to understand the law and why God gave the law in the first place. So we need to understand the purpose by which the law was given or for which the law was given. Okay, but there are some people in the church, even at that time, even today, you know, they, they, they were pretending to be teachers of the law, not understanding what they are saying. Paul said, don't let that happen in the church, Timothy. Wag mong papayagan na yan ay mangyari sa church. Wag mong papayagan na mga taong ito ay makapasok sa church. Okay? Okay, sabi po ni, ni, ni Paul, you need to teach no other doctrine but the glorious gospel of God. Amen? Praise God. So, yun po ang ating pong, uh, 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 tatalakayin po sa, sa araw na ito. Okay? Now, because the law was mentioned, that the law is good, now, we need, uh, I want to, to, to focus more on the scriptures. I want to focus more on the Bible. Okay? Kasi mahalaga sa atin ang Biblia. Every Sunday, kapag nga nagkakatipon-tipon tayo, ay, ay ating dinideclare that that the importance of the Bible in our lives. Amen. We, we, many times we would say, you know, I am what the Bible says I am. I have what the Bible says I have. I can do what the Bible says I can do. Okay, so, so very important sa atin the Bible. But there's something that we need to understand the Bible. The Bible that we have in our hands that contains both the Old Testament and the New Testament scriptures, the Bible that we have in our hands contains both the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Okay, the old covenant is being described by Paul in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 as, or 2 Corinthians chapter 3 as the ministry of death. So the old covenant of law is being described by the Apostle Paul as a ministry of death and ministry of condemnation. Whereas the new covenant of grace is being described as the ministry of the Spirit and the ministry of life. You know, one covenant ministers death, that's the old covenant, and the new covenant of grace ministers life. Ministers the spirit. Okay? So one gives life, one ministers death. So the Bible contains both law and grace. The Bible contains both, you know, the old covenant ministry of death and the new covenant ministry of grace. Okay, so so yung po dapat natin maunuan patungkol sa Bible. Now, the law is good. Well, we can say that the Bible is good. The scripture and the Bible is good. Okay, but there's something that we need to understand about the Scripture. Yes, the Scripture is good and we can benefit from the Bible. But there's something that we need to understand about the Bible. There's something that we need to understand about the Scripture. It is good but powerful. I mean, the, the Bible is good but powerful. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 will tell us that, that the Word is alive and, 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 and powerful and sharper than any a uh, two-edged sword. So the, so, so, so the word, or rather the Bible is good but powerful. Now, I can draw something in the natural. Okay. Now, electricity is good. Do you believe that electricity is good? In fact, we can say that electricity is good. We, we benefit today. We are benefiting from electricity. 
Okay, we have our air conditioning system being run by electricity. We have the sound system being run by electricity. We have our lighting system being run by electricity. The gadgets that you have in your hands. Some of you, you know, instead of the hard copy Bible, napansin ko, dala ninyo, iPhone, iPad, you know. And, and, and that is, that's, that, that, that gadget that you have in your hands uh, are being run by electricity. Don't you know that? Okay? Pag nalobat yan, wala na. Maghahanap ka na ng hard copy Bible, old-fashioned way. Amen? Praise God. Okay? So, kahapon nga, meron ako inasal in, in Las Pinas. At... Uh, Sabi ko sa kanya, tanong ko, well, meron ba kayong inihanda na, na sasabihin sa bawat isa? Well, pastor, meron po. Meron, meron siya hinugot na, na papel. You know, sinulat niya, kamay, sulat kamay. Sabi ko, kakaiba ka sa mga ikinakasal ko ngayon eh. Kasi karamihan sa ikinakasal ko mga couple, pagka yung binikas nila yung kanilang personal vows sa bawat isa, kadalasan mga na, nandun na sa iPhone, nandun na sa iPad. Okay? Ganun po. Kakaiba ka, old passion ka. Pastor, sigurista lang ako eh. Paano ako maglobat? <laughs> ah, that's good. Okay. Pag maglobat, bakit hindi niya lang sabihin niya. Anyway. Okay. So, so, in other words, electricity is good. Amen. We can benefit from electricity. But you know what? Electricity is also powerful. So, we need to rightly handle electricity if we want to benefit from electricity. Right? The same is true with the word. The word is good and powerful. That's why Paul said, study, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Another translation, you would read, rightly handling the word of truth. Amen? There is a right way of handling the Bible. There is a wrong way of handling the Bible. If you handle the Bible the right way, you can benefit from the word. But if you will, if you handle the Bible wrongly, wrongly dividing, wrongly handling the Bible, instead of you benefiting from the word, the same Bible that, that benefits you, the same Bible can destroy you. Like electricity. Amen. The moment you, you, you handle electricity wrongly, like fire, fire is good but powerful. Amen? You can benefit from fire. Okay? You, you, you can cook your food uh, 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 with the fire. But the same fire can burn your house if you don't handle fire and electricity uh, rightly. So there is a wrong way to handle the Bible and there is the right way to handle the Bible. So yung po ang ating aaramin po natin ngayon. Hayo ko po mapunta doon sa wrongly handling the Bible. That instead of I benefiting from the word, you know, uh, 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 the, the, the Bible would, would hurt me. Amen? Now, I remember, you know, this is very true. I, I remember uh, uh, the movie uh, by, by Denzel Washington. Yung pong uh, nasa kanya po yung, yung last copy, the only, the, the only copy of the Bible. You know, after sa isang nagkaroon po ng nuclear uh, uh, catastrophe, holocaust, or third world war, something like that. Everything was destroyed. Everything was devastated. You know, including the Bibles, all the Bibles in the world, you know, were destroyed. At, at marami po, meron po ilang mga nag-survive na mga tao. At ang eksena po ng movie, doon po sa isang small town, at itong small town na ito being controlled by a man by the name of Carnegie. So that was the villain in the movie. Uh, he was the villain, he was the contrabida, ika nga, doon sa movie. Okay, so, so meron siya mga, mga tauhan na meron pa mga nag-survive na mga Mga, 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 mga weapons so they control the people they control the town and then you know meron siyang hinahanap bagamat he was already in control pero hindi siya satisfied so he was looking for something he was looking for a book okay and what and, and this book was the bible and then dumating sa eksena ito si Denzel Washington at uh, naspagsuspecha niya na yung hinahanap niyang biblia ay nasa kamay ni Denzel Washington and then, uh, gumawa siya ng lahat ng paraan, you know, at, at, at nagkataon po na magaling din sa, sa, sa barel, you know, si, si Denzel. Okay, at hindi ko bibigay sa inyo yung, 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 yung end of the movie kasi uh, pag, baka hindi nyo pa napanood at baka mamaya bumili kayo ng DVD doon sa kabila, uh, doon sa, 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 sa whatever, sa Imus Market. Anyway, I, I uh, you know, 
na, 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 na suspense niya na yung, yung Biblia ang hinahawak niya nasa kamay nito si Denzel Washington. So ginawa niya lahat ng paraan pero hindi siya hindi niya magawa. Hindi niya makuha yung Biblia na kay Denzel kasi magaling din lumaban to si Denzel. Magaling sa barel, magaling sa pana and so on and so forth. And then, <clears throat> uh, marami nang namamatay sa kanila. Mga tauhan niya, marami nang namamatay. At siya mismo, na-injured na, 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 na siya dahil po sa, you know, attempt niya na makuha yung Biblia ang hawak ni Denzel Washington. And then finally, nagtatak itong mga tauhan niya. Ano pang meron sa librong ito? And one of his, one of his men uh, uh, asked him, you know, you are not really looking for the man. You are looking for that blank, blank book. Blank, blank, kasi nagmura siya. You know? you're, you're, you're actually looking for that blank, blank book. You know? And then, nagalit itong si Carnegie. And sabi niya, you know what? It is not a blank, blank book. It's a weapon. A weapon aimed right at the hearts and minds of the weak and the desperate. It will give us the book, the Bible. The book will give us control of them. If we want to rule more than one small blank, blank town, we have to have it. We have to have the book. We have to have the Bible. People will come from all over. They will do exactly what I tell them if the words are from that book. It happened before. It will happen again. Okay? So in other words, with the Bible, okay, sabi niya, whatever I say, whatever I tell the people to do, if they see that those are coming from this book, they will follow. And I can control them. See? He can wrongly handle the scripture. You know what? This is very true. Narod naman tayo lahat ng television. Pag nakapanood ba kayo ng television na merong isang malaking grupo ng mga tao na seemingly worshiping God, Thousands and tens of thousands of people in one big place or one big arena na kung saan po lahat ng mga tao po pare-pareho ang kasuotan. Lahat ng lalaki pare-pareho ang nakalong islib na puti at pare-pareho ang kulay itim ang pantalon. Okay? At lahat ng babae pare-pareho ang suot, puti at pagkatapos mata, ma, 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 mahaba yung saya. Okay? At lahat ng kababaihan walang make-up Walang hikaw, walang rilos, walang alahas, you know what? At kapag ka sila ay, you know, nagpuri kuno sa Panginoon, ay sabay-sabay at kumpas ng kanilang mga kamay na ganyan. Kita mo, sabay-sabay na ganun. Okay? Pati yung kanilang linggo, pare-pareho. Don't tell me that nobody is controlling them. Don't tell me that these tens of thousands of people are not under manipulation. They are not under control. Come on. And the one controlling them is using the same Bible that we have in our hands. Hindi na ako lalayo. Kagagaling ko lang sa Dabao. Meron doong appointed son of God sa Dabao. Using the Bible to control tens of thousands of people. Amen? Wrongly handling the word of truth. Are you still here with me? I'm not interested in that. Amen? I am interested in rightly handling the word. Are you interested with me today? Okay, let's go into that. Amen? Hallelujah. How to handle the Bible properly? God has given us at least three tools. Not just necessary tools. Tinawag lang tools. Amen? Because, you know, many of them, they are persons that God, you know, brought into our lives. They are not tools, but they are persons actually. Okay? Not only God gave us the Bible. Now, if God gave us the Bible without, you know, teaching us how to properly handle the Bible, then, you know, that will be injustice on the part of God. Amen? Are you still with me? Okay, now, in, in, in number one, okay, God has given us the Spirit. Okay? Not only God gave us the Bible, He gave us the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit, the great teacher, the greatest teacher to teach us. Paul, uh, rather, Jesus Christ said, when the Holy Spirit comes, do you have the Holy Spirit in you? Do you have the Holy Spirit living in you? When the Holy Spirit comes, He will lead you into how many truth? He will lead you into all truth. He will teach you all things. He will glorify Jesus in your life. Amen? So we've got the great teacher, 
are living and dwelling on the inside of us. In fact, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 in verse 9. Yeah, you have that. But as, as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man. Okay. The things which God has prepared for them that love them. But God has revealed them unto us by His who? By His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth how many things? All things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save or except the Spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God. Are you interested in knowing the things of God? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now, sabi natin now, now we have received. Not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know. That we might know the things, amen, that are freely given to us of God. You've got the Holy Spirit in you so that you may know. You've got the greatest teacher in you, amen. Now when it comes to the things of God, when, it's come, when it comes to spiritual truth, you know what? It takes the Holy Spirit to know them. We can never know a spiritual truth apart from the Holy Spirit. I don't care if a person is a highly intellectual person. Maybe he's a bar top notcher or he, he, he may, you know, uh, 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 he may have studied in Harvard University, you know, with the degree of a doctorate degree in philosophy, something like that. So he may be a highly intelligent person, intellectual you know, highly educated, but you know what? Without the Holy Spirit in him, he will never know spiritual truth. Amen? On the other hand, ang isang tao po, marahil wala po siyang uh, uh, opportunity na makapag-aral, makapagtapos mala ng elementary, pero kung kinaroon siya ng Baral Espiritu, pwede po niya maunawaan ang patungkol sa mga bagay-bagay sa Diyos. Amen? Praise God. I know of a man by the name of Smith Wigglesworth. Have you heard that name, Smith Wigglesworth? He, is one, uh, he was one of the greatest men of God this past century. But you know what? Si Smith Wigglesworth po, ay hindi man lang nakatungtong po ng eskwelahan. Kahit na po nursery, tsaka kindergarten. Hindi po siya nakatungtong. No read, no write, ika nga po siya. Nakatuto na lang po siya magbasa ng kaunti at magsulat ng kaunti. Nung siya ay makapag-asawa niya. Makapag-asawa na ang kanyang asawang si Polly, uh, Wigglesworth ang nagturo sa kanya at least makapag-sign man lang siya ng name at makapag, you know, basic, basic uh, uh, alphabet and so on and so forth. Okay? But you know what? Whenever he preach, yung po mga nakaupo sa kanya at yung po mga nakikinig sa kanya, you will be amazed. Many of them are university uh, professors, you know, scientists, doctors, medical doctors, and lawyers, mataling tao, nakikinig po sa isang no read, no write. Amen? At bagamat, you know, sa maraming pagkakataon, mali-mali ang kanyang grammar, wala silang pakilam doon. Okay? Ang hinahalap nila yung revelation of Jesus Christ mula doon kay Smith Wigglesworth. Are you still with me? So, so you know, even if a person, uh, wala siyang gaanong uh, 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 naabo sa kanyang pinigala, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you can understand the things of God. Amen? Hallelujah to Jesus. Okay, now let's go on. Now, so we have the Holy Spirit. Well, does it mean, Pastor, that, that because I have the Holy Spirit, you know, okay na sa akin na hindi na ako mag-church, hindi, na, hindi ko na kinakailangan ng pastor, hindi ko na kinakailangan yung, 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 yung uh, fellow believers, hindi ko na kinakailangan yung tagapagturo. Anyway, I've got the Holy Spirit. Now, pupunta sa pangalawa. Not only God gave us the Holy Spirit in us, He gave us and He brought to us the saints. Saints. Fellow believers. Amen? So, hindi lamang po the Holy Spirit, but God gave us saints. God put other people in our lives to help us understand the Bible. Amen? Doon po sa 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, meron po tinutukoy doon ng mga elders. Those elders that rule well, those elders that labor in the Word. So meron mga elders, mga leaders at church, they were called by God, anointed by God to labor in the Word and in doctrine, in the Word and in teaching. 
Now, we need to understand this, that in the body of Christ, in the church, you know, there are some people whom God has gifted, whom God has called to teach certain scriptures, okay? So we need them to rightly divide the word of truth for us. May binabagit po si Pablo sa Ephesians chapter 4, beginning verse 8, binabagit po niya yung five-fold ministry gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So these are people in the church whom God is specifically called and anointed and gifted, you know, to teach us and to help us understand the scripture. Amen? At yung pong different ministry gifts like the, the apostle and the prophet and the evangelist and the pastor and the teachers, you know, ibang-ibang gift po ito. You know, may mga flavor, kanya-kanyang flavor po sila. Kaya, you know, we need all of them. You know, I, I'm privileged to sat under, you know, some of these who are flowing in the apostolic ministry. Katulad po si Rob Rupus, flowing in the apostolic ministry. Okay? At maging si David Dimola, although he's a pastor, but I believe that he's flowing and in the apostolic ministry, something like that. So we are connected to them. So we need them. And, and also, I am, I, am, uh, I am blessed to sit under a teacher like Chad Man's, Man, uh, Manbridge. You know, siya po isang Australian pastor, but he is a very good teacher. He can teach the word, you know, uh, 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 line by line, precept upon precept, like Bob Yandian. So you, you mga gifted teachers that God brought, brought, uh, 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 brought to us. Okay, so we need to acknowledge them. We need to recognize them. Okay, now, now I remember the, uh, the other Sunday, uh, uh, a good friend, a close friend by, by, by Chad Mans, Man, Manbridge, uh, si, 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 uh, uh, si, Stockdale, Martin Stockdale, magkakasama kami sa Hong Kong actually. At siya po ay nagminsay po sa ating church sa Las Pinas sa isang service, sa, sa, sa 5.30 service. Meron po sa sinabi na hindi ko makalimutan. Okay, bagamat mas bata sa kanya po si Chad, pero nirecognize po niya yung gifting na meron po si Chad. Sabi niya, Chad is a gifted teacher. You know, iba naman ang aking gift, sabi niya. Uh, God gifted me more in the prophetic. Okay, yun ang kanyang keep. He's an evangelist and, and more, uh, he's flowing in the prophetic. And when it comes to teaching, he was telling us, don't expect me to teach like Chad. The teaching gift that Chad has is not in my pocket. So, first time ko po narinig yun. No, it's, it is not in my pocket. Meaning to say, wala ito sa aking bulsa. Ano mang bagay na meron ko sa bulsa, anytime pwede mo hugutin. Meron akong hunger chips sa aking bulsa, anytime pwede kong hugutin. Amen. So, when it comes to the gifts of God, yan po ay mga bagay-bagay na nilagay sa iyong bulsa, ika nga. When it comes to teaching, I have that in my pocket. Anytime I can, I can draw from my pocket, you know, and flow in that gifting and that anointing. So, sabi po ni, ni, ni Martin, I don't have that in my pocket. What I have is, you know, this other gift. Amen? So, we need each other. Okay? Kaya maganda po, I, I told this uh, first service, it's very healthy na kung saan po ay I, uh, once a month or once every two months, meron po tayong mga speaker po dito. Uh, ayoko pong tawagin silang guests kasi many of them are our friends. Some of them are uh, sarili nating pastors doon po sa iba nating mga uh, JFC of churches like Pastor Rick Sidro, Pastor James Reyes, okay? at maging si Noel Espiritu Santo ay hindi na po iba sa atin yan. Pero alam niyo po, kapag nagturo po sila, eh, meron, iba, may, meron po silang variation, meron pong flavor, ika nga ang bawat isa. Nimawa, Pastor Rick Isidro and Pastor James Reyes, they can preach and teach from the same message, from the same outline, using the same outline, using the same message. Pero pagka itinuro niya ni Pastor James, itinuro niya ni Pastor Rick, magkaibang dating. Merong insight dito at merong panibagong insight mula doon sa kabila. Ganun din po si, 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 si Noel Espiritu Santo. You know, sometimes uh, 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 Pastor Noel uh, would, would, would borrow my, some of my, my, my outlines. You know, Pastor Pagkatapos mo magturo, pastor, akin na outline mo. Something like that. One time, uh, I and, and my wife, uh, Ami, we were in a conference. So, Pastor Noel was the one preaching. You know, it was only after 30 minutes na, almost, may gita sa kalagit na kanyang preaching. Nung naisip ko, teka muna, pamilya lang ako sa tinuturo ito, yung, yung plo nung, nung, kanyang, uh, nung kanyang pagtuturo. Ba, he's preaching from my outline. And I never realized that until after 30 minutes. Amen? Why? Because, ibang gift, ibang flavor. Are you still with me? 
Okay? Siguro kung si Pastor Will nandito, kanina pa kayo tawanan ng tawanan yan. That's not in my pocket. I tried one time to be funny, nobody laughed. At least you laugh today. <laughs> Okay, that's not in my pocket. Okay, don't expect me, you know, uh, uh, to, to, to minister like Noel. You know, magkaiba ang gifting, magkaiba ang flavor. Amen? But we need each other. Are you still with me? Praise God. Thank God, you know, we are in the local church. We are in this, in this community of believers. Don't you know that most of the books in the New Testament, okay, are community books? Meaning to say, they are written in a community context. Ang kausap dito ni Pablo ay mga uh, 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 local uh, church believers Kausap niya, ang sulat niya Ay para sa mga believers like you and me Gathered in a local setting like this Okay? So, the Bible is both a spiritual And community book Amen? And there's something that we need to understand No one person has the monopoly Of all the revelation of God Thank God for Joseph Prince But Joseph Prince doesn't have the monopoly Of all the revelation of the gospel of grace Amen. That's why I would always encourage our pastors, you know, kapag ka meron pong mga conferences na, na pwedeng daluhan, you know, uh, dadalo kami sa mga conferences, you know. La, just recently, we have Paul White in Alabang, you know, a very good teacher, you know, a, 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 if you have his book, you know, I, can, I highly recommend his book. He came over here, you know, uh, uh, last July. Hindi lang ako nakatin dahil nasa, nasa New Jersey nga ako. I, 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 Nag-conflict po ang aming schedule. So, something like that. Okay, so... No one has the monopoly of all the revelation of God. That's why we need uh, one another. Hallelujah to Jesus. Okay. Now, number one, spirit. Number two, saints. Then number three, science. Sabi natin science? Science of hermeneutics. So, wag tayong masyadong malulo doon sa itang hermeneutics. You know, uh, kasi kaya ko binanggit niya. Kasi sa Bible schools, Bible college, ay dalawang semestre ko yata pinag-aralan yung hermeneutics eh lalo ako na confuse <laughs> but we will make that very simple today as simple as ABC okay hermeneutics made simple now there's something that we need to understand about the Bible all the scripture is given by the inspiration of God in other words all the writers of every book in the Bible they were inspired by God when they wrote the book that's why everything in the Bible is truth all the scripture is given by the inspiration of God 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 now, all scripture is for your information, but not all scripture is for your application. You can write it down. All scripture, when I say scripture, I am referring to the written word, the Bible. All scripture is for your information, but not all, script, uh, but not all scripture is for your application. I'm always referring to the Bible. Dito. Wala naman dito. Wala naman. <laughs> anyway, uh, all scripture is for your information but not all scripture is for your application another statement all scripture is equally true but not all truth is equally important all scripture is equally true but not all truth is equally important okay how about john 316 for example is john 316 true okay is john 316 for your, not only for your information, it is for your application. Is John 3.16 important? So John 3.16, which is in the scripture, it is both true and it is important. It is for your information as well as for your application. Okay? Now, John 3.16. Since this is true and John 3.16 is important, can you recite? For me, John 3, 16. Okay, one, two, three, go. Kamay yung katabi niyo. Congratulations. You made it. <laughs> See, all of us, we memorize John 3, 16 by heart. Now, the next question is, is Judges 3, 16 true? Can you recite Judges 3.16 for me? Now Ehud made himself a dagger. It was a double-edged and a cubit in length. He fastened it 
under his clothes on his right thigh. Oh, nandun na pala eh. Just Judges chapter 3 verse 16. Judges 3.16 is equally true with John 3.16. Why? Was it true that there was a man by the name of Ehud? Was it true that Ehud made himself a dagger? Was it true that Ehud, you know, made a dagger which is two-edged and a cubit in length? A cubit, uh, mula po, ang sa cubit po, mula dito sa dulo ng daliri hanggang dito po sa elbow. That's one cubit. Okay. It is a cubit in length. And then, he put the dagger under his clothes on his right thigh. Was it true? Wala, hindi kayo maka... Was it true? Yes or no? Yes! Amen? Is this as much the truth as John 3.16? Was it true or is it true that for God so loved the world? Was it true that God gave His only begotten Son? Was it true that uh, whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life? So they are equally true. Amen? Okay? But the question is, this is for your information. But you do, do you have to apply this in your own life? Do you have to apply this truth in your own life? Okay, every time we go to church, lahat tayo merong dagger on our right thigh, you know? No, we don't do that. We know it is true, but we don't apply that in our own lives. Are you still with me? But, as, but when it comes to John 3.16, John 3.16 is true, and then not only for our information, but for our application. We can apply this truth in our own lives. Amen? So, kinakailangan ay ating pong yan na, na mahalaga maunawaan. Okay, all scripture is equally true, but not all scripture is equally important. All scripture is for your information, but not all scripture is for your application. Kasi kung di tayo, hindi natin alam yan, you know, uh, meron po mga ilang mga tao na na-deceive. You know, some, 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 some men in the past, you know, they would be using, you know, certain scripture kapag merong chapter, merong verse. Halimbawa po, merong, uh, merong uh, ibong mandaragit, manggagaling doon sa silangan, and then merong isang tao na mga ngaral, you know, and so on and so forth. Sabi ng tao, I'm, I'm that man. Ako yung man na from the far east, you know, na, na mga ngaral. Okay? Ako yung taong yan. Okay? Inapply sa kanya sarili. Ma, marami po, maraming, maraming na ikayat. And today, there are tens of millions of followers all over the world. And they have just celebrated their 100th anniversary. Using just one isolated scripture. And people were deceived. Are you still with me? Hallelujah. So we don't have to be deceived. I said, we don't have to be deceived. Praise God. So God gave us not only the Bible, He gave us the Holy Spirit, He gave us people, He gave us our pastor, our pastora, and our, past, uh, our pastors and our cell leaders. He gave us the saints, and then uh, He's teaching us today. You know, yung, 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 yung common sense, you know, uh, science of hermeneutics, okay? Hallelujah to Jesus. Are you ready for this? Okay, as simple as ABC. Hermeneutics made simple as ABC. Number one, you need to know the author and the audience. Letter A, I should say. Letter A, you need to know the author and the audience. Okay? Pag nabasa tayo ng Biblia, alamin natin sino ang sumulat nito. At sino ang kanyang sinulatan. Now, pagdating po sa mga uh, New Testament books, eh, maliwanag na po ang karamihan dyan. Si Pablo ang sumulat, ang sinulutan niya ay mga believers, mga born again Christians doon sa Rome. At dahil ako isang believer din, katulad nila, ako isang uh, uh, mananampalatay din, katulad nila, then pwede kong i-apply yung mga sulat, yung mga sinabi ni Apostol Pablo sa mga taga-Roma, pwede kong apply sa akin sarili buhay. Ganon din yung kanyang sulat doon sa, sa, sa kay Timothy. You know, ang sulat niya kay, kay, uh, 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 sa mga mga believers doon sa ganitong church. Okay? If that is uh, applicable to the church in, in Corinth, if this is applicable to the church in Ephesus, then this must be applicable to the church of Jesus Christ in Emos. Amen? Something like that. Okay? Now, so we need to know the author and the audience. Not only the author of the book and the audience, but we need to know they speak, the one speaking. You know, in, 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 within the book, we need to know who is the one speaking and who was speaking to. Let's say, for example, sa Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
You know, many times Jesus Christ was, will be the one speaking. That's why we have this red letter edition. Amen. Pagkakulay pula, si Jesus Christ ang sasalita. Pero hindi po mahalaga lamang na malaman po natin na si Jesus Christ ang sasalita dahil kulay pula sa ating red letter edition. We need to know the audience. Amen. Although red letter coming from the very mouth of Jesus Christ, but can this apply to me? Okay. Well, doon po papasok po importansya, malaman natin kung sino ang kanyang audience. So many times ang kanyang audience ay yung mga tao po nasa ilalim po ng batas. Many times ang kanyang kausap po ay mga hudyo. And he is speaking, you know, and he is teaching about the law to those people who are under the law. Like the Sermon on the Mount. Don't tell me that everything that Jesus Christ said in the Sermon on the Mount, because it is color red in your let, red letter edition, i-apply nyo sa inyong Biblia, uh, sa inyong buhay, I should say. Halimbawa, sinabi po ni Jesus Christ, kapag ka ang sanhi, O ang dahilan ng inyong pagkakasala ang inyong kanang mata, alisin ninyo ang inyong kanang mata. Kapag ka ang dahilan ng pagkakasala ang inyong kanang kamay, putulin nyo ang inyong kanang kamay. Red letter yan. Galing yan sa bibig ni Jesus Christ. Amen? Yan ba'y pwede nyo apply sa buhay ninyo? As far as I can see, walang nag apply niya sa buhay. Dito sa church na ito. Tapos nga natin na ating kanang kamay? si Buo pa ang kanang kamay ninyo. Amen? Pero sabi ni Jesus, kung yan ang sanghin, putulin nyo. Kung, you know, pluck, pluck your eye out. See? Alam po natin na, na, na bagamat sinabi ni Jesus, we don't apply. Not necessarily we apply that in our own lives. But don't be selective. Amen? Yung buong Sermon the Mount. Okay? Of course, uh, doon sa mga ilan na, na we can interpret, we can see in the light of the new covenant truth, then we can apply that into our own lives. Amen? So we need to know the author, we need to know the audience. Halimbawa, uh, yung po mga letters ni John sa 3 John go to 3 John 3rd letter of John okay verse 1 the elder so John introduced himself as the elder so he was already an aged person now Bible scholars will tell us that, that this letter was written by John sometime in 93-94 AD more than 60 years after the resurrection. Jesus Christ died and rose again sometime in 30 AD. So it took more than 60 years before John wrote this letter. So he was, you know, uh, an aged person with more than 60 years in the ministry, in the new covenant ministry. Amen? Okay, so that's the background. Now, the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. So ang kausap niya rito, ang audience dito ay isang tao na ang pangalan si Gaius. Beloved, verse 2, beloved. Now, yun naman pala, pastor eh. Yung tao lang, eh, isang tao pa lang, ang panganig gayo sa kausin mo rito, hindi naman ako. Eh, hindi ko pwedeng apply sa akin sarili. Now, wait a minute. Anong tawag niya kay, kay, kay gayo? Well, beloved gayo. And then verse 2, he said, beloved. Do you believe that you are as much a beloved of God as gayo was? Do you believe that God loves you? Then you can apply this in your own life. Amen? He said, beloved. Are you loved by God? Are you accepted in the beloved? So beloved, I desire above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Because God loves you, He wants you to prosper in every area of your life. Not only God wants you to prosper spiritually, God wants you to prosper physically having divine health. God wants you to prosper financially in every aspect of your life. And the only reason that I see why God wants you to prosper. They want to know the reason why God wants you to prosper in every area, every area of your life? Simple. He loves you. Amen? As simple as that. Because God loves you, He wants you to prosper in everything. Amen? Praise God. So, that was John, okay, introducing himself as an elder. The audience was Gaius. Now, pagdating po sa uh, chapter 2, Okay, John chapter 2, let's, let's, a uh, uh, second John, second letter of John, uh, I should say. Second letter of John, in chapter 1, he said here, The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth. Okay, was he writing to a lady that was elected by the people? Okay, like a senadora? No, no, of course not. So, Ang tawag po sa church ay elect lady with her children. 
So he was, he was, he, he was writing to a church, a local setting. At tinawag yung church as elect lady with her children. Okay? Now, 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. Now, pag tayo sa 1 John, although the writer, the author was very clear, pero yung chapter 1, hindi masyadong maliwanag kung sino ang kanyang audience. Okay? Meron dalawang school of thoughts. Ang kausap ba ni John sa 1 John ay mga believers or mga unbelievers? Pag natin sa chapter 2, maliwanag, mga believers na ang kanya kausap. Na tinawag niyang children. Okay? My little children. So, pag natin chapter 2, no doubt about it. Ang kausap ni John ay mga believers. But how about chapter 1? Sa so chapter 1 ba, ano bang kausap o sino bang kausap ni John dito? Yung mga believers or unbelievers? Kinakailang makita po natin ang context. So, maliwanag po na ang kausap niya dito ay mga unbelievers. Sapagkat wala pa silang fellowship with John. Okay? Sabi niya, I wrote this to you so that you can have fellowship with us. So in other words, ito mga taong ito kausap niya, wala pang fellowship with them. But our fellowship is with the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So he was addressing the unbelievers in chapter 1. Okay? Particularly, yung pong tinatawag na Gnostics, na ang paniniwala po nila, hindi po sila naniniwala sa kasalanan. They don't believe na sila po ay nagkakasala. Okay? Hindi sila niwala sila yung makasalanan because they don't believe that they are sinners. So they don't believe the, the need to uh, 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 believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So wala silang pangailangan ng tagapagligtas. So sabi po ni John, paano kayo maliligtas? Kung hindi nyo aaminin na, inyo, na kayo nakakasala. That's why pagdating sa, 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 sa verse 9, ang sabi po ni John, you know, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from how many? 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. From how many unrighteousness? All unrighteousness. Nabalikan po natin yan. Okay? God cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Is this a one-time event? Being cleansed from all unrighteousness? Or is this an ongoing daily event in your life? One-time event? Ongoing daily event. Sino one-time event? It must be a one-time event. How many believe that God made you righteous? Are you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Amen. Now, God cannot make you righteous unless He cleanses you from all unrighteousness. As simple as that, right? God cannot make you righteous unless He cleanses you First, from all unrighteousness. So that must be a one-time event. Because being made righteous was a one-time event. It took place the day we got born again. Amen? Nung araw na tayo sumampalatay kay Kristo, inamin natin ang ating pagkakasala. Tinanggap natin na tayo makasalanan, nagkasala at kinakailangan natin tagapagligtas, sumampalatay tayo sa ating Panginoon, pinatawa tayo sa ating kasalanan, you know, nililis tayo sa lahat ng, uh, ng, uh, ng unrighteousness, okay? At tayo po ay ginawa niyang matuwid sa harapan ng Diyos. Amen? So that, that took place the day we got born again. So in other words, 1 John 1.9, okay, you all, if you are a believer, are you a believer? If you are a believer, you already applied to yourself 1 John 1.9. It was already a past event in your life. 1 John 1, 9 should not be an ongoing daily event in your life. Amen? It was a one-time event that you applied in your life the day you got born again. That was the day that God cleansed you from all unrighteousness. That was the day that God forgave you of all your sins. That was the day that God made you righteous. Amen? And on top of that, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, the background of this, of this letter, it was written by John 60 years after the resurrection. And this is the only verse in this entire New Testament that you can read about confessing our sins to God to be forgiven. Amen? Nowhere you can uh, read that in the other letters of the Apostle Paul. So in other words, brothers and sisters, put yourself in the shoes of the early believers. 
Kung kayo po inaborn again, 40 AD, 50 AD, 60 AD, 20 years after the resurrection, 30 years after the resurrection, even 50 years after the resurrection, that would be 80 AD. Amen? You have never heard 1 John 1.9. It is unheard for the first 60 years. Amen? But today, because of wrongly dividing, wrongly handling the word, you know what? Okay? A lot of people are put in bondage with this single verse. Living in fear. I was like that before. I was living in fear. Bago ako matulog sa gabi, you know, I was afraid. Kasi, baka meron akong kasalahan ng nagawa, hindi ko nakumpisan. Okay? Paano pag namatay ako ngayon sa pagtulog? Meron pala akong hindi nakumpisan. Impier noong punta ko. So a lot of people are living in fear because of wrongly dividing the word. Wrongly handling the word. Are you still here with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, so that's number one. Old author and audience. Number two, you need to know the background and the basis of the book. The background and the basis of the book. Okay? The background of the book, the base of the book. Halimbawa, the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, yung pong book of Proverbs, ito po ay mga wisdom na kung saan inilagay po, isinulat po ni Solomon sa isang libro, mga wisdom po na natutuhan niya mula sa kanyang nanay. Okay? Sibat sibat. That was the wisdom. So the book of Proverbs was a wisdom given by a woman it was a mother's wisdom written to a son. And that would include Proverbs chapter 31. Now listen to me. Proverbs 31 was our mother's wisdom written to his own son, Solomon. So Proverbs 31 was written to a son. So binibigyan ko po ng diin para po sa benefit kaming malalakihan. Kasi katulad ko noon, pag nagbasa ko ng buko Proverbs, Pagkatapos ko ng chapter 30 at nasa chapter 31 na ako, parang hinihinto ko ng aking pagbabasa. Eh, hindi na para sa akin ito. Para sa mga babae lang ito eh. Something like that. Okay? Kasi traditionally, yung po itinuro sa atin si church. Na Proverbs chapter 31 ay para sa mga babae. No. Iyan ay patungkol sa mga kababaihan, pero iyan po'y sinulat sa isang anak na lalaki. Okay? Iyan po'y wisdom na ibigay po ng nanay sa kanyang anak na lalaki. Kung ikaw yung mag-aasawa, Itong babae ito ang piliin mo. And then he outlined all those characteristics. Hindi natutun si Lomon. Okay? More than 900 ang kanyang napangasawa. Eh, naghahanap pa siya ng Proverbs 31 niya. <laughs> Amen? So in other words, brothers and sisters, you know, that's, that's, that's how we approach the book. Are you still with me? Okay? Now, yan po yung karakteristik ng, ng, ng kababaihan na dapat makasawa po ng isang uh, uh, lalaki, okay, ng isang anak na lalaki Okay, now, now, another one is the book of Hebrews Now, as far as the author You know, meron pong ilang ibang, ibang school of thoughts about the book of Hebrews Some people believe that the book of Hebrews were written Was written by, 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 by Paul Ang iba po ay si Apollo Sa iba po ay si, si uh, You know, si Barnabas na, uh, that, that, It doesn't matter One thing I know na kung sino man sumulat ito Siya po isang Hudyo At siya po ay bihasa sa batas, amen Pero maraga po yung kung sino po ang kanyang sinulatan at ano yung background ang sinulatan po niya of course yung po mga Hebrews okay, the book of Hebrews were written to, was written to Hebrews of course at sino itong mga Hebrews na ito sino itong mga Hudyo na ito they were believers most of them they were believers and then you need to know the background you need to know the background of the book the book was written before 70 AD okay so the book the background of the book it was written before 70 AD now, ano significance of 70 AD? Those are Jerusalem. It was in 70 AD that the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans. Okay? So it was in 70 AD. So in other words, brothers and sisters, after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, for the next 30 years, yung pong templo sa Jerusalem ng mga Hudyo, yan po ay nandun pa rin. nag exist pa rin. Buhay na buhay pa rin yung templo ng mga Hudyo doon po sa Jerusalem even after the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Araw-araw, sila yung nagsasacrifice po ng mga animals, yung po mga uh, 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 goat and, and, and sheep and, and so on and so forth. 
So araw-araw po, and there are thousands of animals being sacrificed every day in the temple in the city of Jerusalem. At kung ikaw po ay isang bagong mananampalataya, dati kang Hudyo, Hebreo ka, tapos naging mananampalataya ka, okay? at nagkataon pa na ang iyong bahay ay malapit pa doon sa templo. So every day hindi may iwasan na naaamoy mo yung, yung, yung sinusulog na mga hayop. Imagine, thousands of animals you know, being burned inside the temple. You know, yun lamang pong uh, merong barbecue party sa kapitbahay, ay amoy na amoy na natin sa, sa, sa bahay natin. Di ba pag merong ilang piraso lang yun ng barbecue? Ang sarap naman amoy na yun, saan gagaling? Okay? So lalo pa yung thousands of animals being slaughtered and being burned in the temple. Okay? So amoy mo yun. So in other words, isang Hebrew Christian, dati kang Hudyo, naging mananampalatay ni Jesus Cristo, malaki po ang temptation na bumalik sa batas ni Moses. Every day, narinig mo yung iyak ng mga hayop. Every day, nahamoy mo yung sinusog na hayop sa templo. Halimbawa, ikaw ay, ay, ay bagong kasal kayo. Okay? You are a couple and a believer of Jesus Christ. You were, you were formerly Hebrews. And then, nagkataon ng anak ninyo, Katulad din, may isang anak ay lalaki. So, umidad ng isang araw, dalawang araw, tatlong araw, you know, naamun nyo araw-araw yung, 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 yung nangyayari sa templo. Narinig ninyo yung nangyayari sa templo. Okay? Then, pagdating ng ikaw, walong araw, nako, ang laki ng temptation, ang laki po ng, 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 ng hatak sa inyo ng templo. Sige na, dalhin na natin. According to the law of Moses, kinakailangan yung ating anak na lalaki, kinakailangan circumcise sa eight day. Okay? So, although you are a believer, pero babalik at babalik ka doon sa batas. Amen? So, yun po ang ina-address po ng writer ng book of Hebrews. That's why in the book of Hebrews, there is so much comparison between the old covenant and the new covenant. The old covenant of law, the new covenant of grace. And we have a better covenant established on better promises. Okay? Our high, our high priest under the new covenant is no longer a high priest after the order of Melchiz, uh, after the order of Aaron, the Levitical priesthood. We have a new high priest. Jesus Christ is our high priest at the right of God. He is our high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Amen? So there's so much comparison between the old and the new. And we are no longer under the old covenant. Under the old covenant, every day, you know, the priest has to sacrifice daily in the temple. But under the new covenant, Jesus Christ, once and for all, He offered Himself. He, he obtained an eternal redemption for us. And, you know, uh, 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 and, and that was once and for all. Amen? So, kapag naalaman po natin yung pong background, you know, why it was written, to whom it was written, by whom, and then we will clearly understand the Bible. Amen? That's letter A. That's letter B. Letter A, you need to know the author and the audience. Letter B, you need to know the background and the basis why the book was written. And then letter C, this is the most important, I believe. Okay? Letter C, you need to understand covenantal context. Amen? Mahalaga po, namalaman po natin yung Sang covenant ito kabilang. Okay? Covenantal context. Is this under the old covenant? Or is this under the new covenant? Simply lang. Is this before the cross? Or is this after the cross? Because we know that the cross of Jesus Christ is the great divide. Before the cross, old covenant. After the cross, new covenant. Amen? The old covenant ended on the cross. And the new covenant began on the cross of Jesus Christ. So the, the cross of Jesus Christ is the dividing line between the old and the new. You know, it is not the page in our Bible between Malachi and Matthew. Mal, uh, 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 the Old Testament did not end in the book of Malachi and the New Testament did not begin in Matthew chapter 1 verse 1. As most people know. Amen? Okay, we have to change that. Are you still with me? We have to renew our mind. Hallelujah. The old covenant of law ended on the cross of Jesus Christ. At the death of Jesus Christ, Christ is the end of the law. And the new covenant of grace began at the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the question will be, this is, is this before the cross or is this after the cross? Let's say, for example, with, uh, let's talk about forgiveness. Now, before the cross, Jesus Christ said, if you forgive, God will forgive you. If you don't forgive, God will, will not forgive you. In other words, 
If you want God to forgive you, you forgive first, then God will forgive you. If you don't forgive, God will not forgive you. And then after the cross, Paul said, forgive one another because God in Christ Jesus has already forgiven you. Now, who is telling the truth? Jesus or Paul? Who is telling the truth? Jesus Christ said, you have to forgive first before God can forgive you. Paul said, no, 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 no. God already has forgiven you, therefore you can forgive one another. Now, who's telling the truth? Now, both of them are telling the truth. Amen? Jesus Christ talked about forgiveness before his death and resurrection. Paul talked about forgiveness after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That cross of Jesus Christ changed everything. Are you still with me? So, mahalaga po makita po natin yung covenantal context. Is this before the cross? Or is this after the cross? Amen? Hallelujah. Okay? Glory to God. Now, the cross changed everything. But there's something that we need to understand. Okay? Although the cross changed everything, there are some practices under the old that pass through the cross and then it is all right for us to practice them under the new. Okay, let's for example. Did you enjoy today? Worshiping and praising God with singing and with the use of all kinds of musical instruments. Amen? We have the drums and the cymbals. We have the guitar, string instruments. You know, we have the keyboard, wind instruments, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, sa Old Testament po, lahat ng yan ay makita po natin. Marami po mga scriptures na mababasa po natin. Now, we are being encouraged, the people under the Old Covenant are being encouraged to worship God and to praise God using musical instruments. Amen? The book of Psalms, Psalms 150, Psalms 100, and so on and so forth. But, you know, under the new. So, people worship God using musical instruments before the cross. And then, the practice of using musical instruments pass through the cross, and then under the new covenant, don't you know that in the New Testament, there is almost no mention of using musical instruments. The New Testament books are almost silent when it comes to musical instruments, except probably for Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, you know, uh, in passing, something like that. Okay? But the question is, would it be wrong for us to use musical instruments today? Simply because the New Testament books are almost silent when it comes to musical instruments. Of course not. Well, Pastor, I thought the cross of Jesus Christ changed everything. Yes, that is true. But when, 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 when the cross changed you, He will change you from the inside. Amen? Amen? So here, people are worshiping using musical instruments, praising God, musical instruments, Okay, with all kinds of motives in their hearts. But under the new covenant, our heart, the cross of Jesus Christ changed our heart. Today we praise God, we worship God because of Jesus and because of what He has done and because of what He has already given to us. Amen? We don't worship God because we are trying to earn His blessings. The more we worship, the longer we sing, the more we can be blessed. No, no, no. You can sing for five minutes, you can sing for five hours, it doesn't matter. Your heart is what matters to God. Amen? So there's nothing wrong with using music and instruments. The same is true with tithing. Okay? Tithing is all throughout the Old Testament. You've got lots of scriptures on that. And tithing passed through the cross. And then in the New Testament, Paul was silent when it comes to tithing. The New Testament books, you know, we are almost silent when it comes to tithing, except probably for Hebrews chapter 6 and chapter 7. It was a reference to tithing, you know, between Abraham and Melchizedek, something like that. Okay? Well, the next question is, would it be wrong for us to practice tithing under the New Testament? Of course not. Amen? Again, the cross changed the heart. Here, people tithes under the Old Test covenant, nagtatay sa mga tao, to earn the blessings of God. They have to bring their tithes for God to open the windows of heaven. They have to bring their tithes for, for God to redeem the devourer for the sake. 
Okay? They have to bring their tithes for God to bless them. Amen? Okay, but here, we give our tithes not because we are trying to earn the blessing of God. We give our tithes not because we are trying, you know, to, to, to earn the favor of God. No, 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 no. Here under the old covenant, because of what Jesus Christ has done, we know and we believe that when Jesus Christ rose again from the dead, the windows of heaven were open to us. We know and we believe that when Jesus Christ died and rose again, we have been redeemed from the curse and we are now blessed with the blessing of Abraham. So we give our tithes not because we are trying to earn the blessings of God. Well, one of the reasons I know that, 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 uh, 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 that Paul was almost silent on, on tithing, okay? Not because he was against tithing. He was for grace giving. Yes, Paul was for grace giving. But nowhere that we can read that he was against tithing. He was silent, almost silent when it comes to tithing. Why? Because under the new covenant with the Spirit of God dwelling on the inside of you, if I teach tithing every Sunday, I would limit you to 10% of your giving. Even if you want to give more, you know, pag dumatis 10%, oh, okay na to. Okay? At least, nakapagbigay na ako ng tithes. I don't want to, we, we don't want to limit you on that. Okay? Because with the Spirit of God on the inside of you, you became partakers of God's divine nature. Amen? You've got the Holy Spirit in you. And I don't know about you, but the divine nature of God is that of generosity. I said the divine nature of God is that of generosity. Amen. Amen? We always say, as Jesus Christ is, so are we in this world. Do you believe that? As Jesus Christ is at the right of God, so are we in this world? Okay. Is Jesus Christ righteous? So are we righteous in this world? Is Jesus Christ holy? So are we holy in this world? Is Jesus Christ victorious? So are we victorious in this world? Is Jesus Christ stingy? I'm sorry. Is Jesus Christ generous? So are we generous in this world? He is not stingy. Amen? Christ who dwells in you is not stingy. He is generous. And He wants to use you. You know, to bless other people. Amen? So we don't want to limit you just to 10%. You can give more than that with the generosity of God. If you want to give, you know, 90%, go ahead and give it. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We got 10 minutes more. Oh, no, no. It's not number. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So in other words, brothers and sisters, you know, rightly handling the Word of God, rightly handling the Bible. Thank God for the Bible that we have in our hands. But we need to rightly handle the Bible. Amen. Thank God not only God gave us the Scripture, He gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us the believers. He gave us our pastors. He gave us here, you have Pastora Man, and the other pastors we have in uh, uh, Jesus Faith Christian Fellowship. Okay? And then He gave us, you know, the mind of Christ so that we can rightly divide the word of truth. And today, hermeneutics was made simple to us. Amen? Simple as ABC. Knowing the author and the audience Knowing the background and the base of the book, okay, understanding covenantal context. Amen? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. In other words, brothers and sisters, we need to major on the major. Let's make the main thing the main thing. Emphasize on the most important. Okay? Our message should be Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We only have one message. That is all about Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ has done. God has to remind me again, just the other day, He has to remind me again, you know, as a pastor and as a teacher, okay, if you preach too much and you give emphasis in your messages, telling the people on what they need to do. You have to do this, you have to do that, don't do this, don't do that. You are teaching the people to be dependent on you, the pastor. And the more the people are dependent on the pastor, they will be less dependent on the Holy Spirit. Amen? And the danger is, the more people are dependent on the pastor like me, the more I can manipulate and control you. 
and I, I, I have no interest. I've got no interest in that. Amen? I've got no interest in manipulating, controlling people. My only interest, my only desire is to exalt Jesus Christ. I only have one message, Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen? We better teach you how to trust, you know, in the Spirit of God dwelling on the inside of you. Believing in what Jesus Christ has done for you. What He did on the cross is enough to bless you. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you have learned principles from the Word of God that will change your life forever. Our messages are available in DVD and audio formats. You may contact us at the following phone numbers. 046-471-3516 and 046-515-7459 If you want to sow to assist us in proclaiming the gospel, you may deposit to Jesus Faith Christian Fellowship BPI Savings Account Number 1283-139235 Dueno Branch, Imus, Cavite Or you may visit us at our church 